Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatico 6 Expert. Uh, so since the last episode, it hasn't been a ton of time because I'm ready to push on to what we're going to be doing uh, today. But one thing I did, or a few things that I did do, is I did go ahead and clean up some automation. Uh, so you can see right here, we have our mixers set up. Um, I haven't set up the presses just yet. I'm still debating how I want to do that, but we do have the mixer set up. Uh, we have some connectors that run and plug into the basins, as well as connectors that come over and they plug into the redstone dust on the sides of these. And then a connector that comes down to this deployer, uh, which is being fed blaze cakes. Now, if we take a look in here at the way this is set up, uh, you can see that there's different colored lines. There's white and there's lime uh, that's going to detect if there's something within the basins for the mixers. Uh, also, fluid, we'll take a look at that here in a second, but fluid is being input from a fluid collection funnel uh, below the floor. But basically, uh, this basin, we have Blaze Cakes blacklisted, and the deployer, they're whitelisted, and then uh, Blaze Cakes are being fed into the chest that relates to that the Blaze mixer. And uh, then it just detects and says, okay, there's something in this mixer. Go ahead and turn this one on by basically turning off the redstone. Um, and then it'll start the mixer running. And then, you know, once all the specific items are in there, it'll start running. Um, and then this is able to run if there's something in this mixer. And if it does, it'll feed a blaze cake over. And of course, with the blaze cakes, it won't feed more than it can. So if, if the blaze is still active and it's hot and it's blue, uh, it's not going to be able to feed over more blaze cakes. So that does mean that we're really only running off of the fully powered blaze. That's all we're really worried about with it. Uh, but that's fine. Blaze cakes, like I said, are free. Uh, over here we have, this is the blaze mixer chest. This is the water mixer chest. And this is uh, the plates because I did change those up to where they run through the create system as well. And then over here, we just have a small fluid collection funnel, uh, infinite water source on top of it, and it provides infinite water uh, to our mixer that uses the water. Uh, and as far as plates go, uh, I went ahead and just set them all coming up through uh, the XNet system and just the recipes feeding into a chest down there. So that way we don't have to really worry about overflow because that was a slight concern. It wasn't very common, but if I ordered plates and maybe they came in staggered or something like that, it could mess up on the mechanical belt. Uh, and that way it deals with that quite well for us. Just kind of getting some of our create automation switched over to work with XNet. Now our stuff that works through Corporea is fine. We don't have to worry about it whatsoever. It's not going to change uh, from the system that we have in place. I like heavy stocking through Corporea a lot more, recipes like this, uh, but stuff like this a little bit better with XNet, I think. Um, and then I also just did some rearranging because we didn't need all that clutter that was coming out. Move this over, uh, we'll facade this with a pillar, have this coming off the side, and everything should work uh, quite nicely. Uh, now, due to our overflowing chest, uh, our mob farm has pretty much stopped working because it has stopped requesting uh, the saplings here, uh, it stopped sending beeswax, stopped even trying, it seems like, uh, to fulfill our quota. It's ran out of saplings in the system. Luckily, there is still some saplings in there. Uh, but it's almost like it was just like, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't even care anymore uh, because our system is just so backed up. And that's why we need to get into our drawer controllers because it's it's a little bit a little bit problematic i mean like i said i could just set the drawers up without drawer controllers but drawer controllers we need them we really really need them so uh no matter how we no matter how we slice it so we're gonna start pushing into new Mattercraft today which as you guys may know is one of my favorite tech mods of all time absolutely wonderful mod uh, and we're going to start off with superheated steel now, long term, we won't have to do this method, um, but at the moment, we're going to need 18 obsidian, 18 tar, two blocks of steel. Now, you can also just craft the single ingots, but there's not really a point. We're going to be making blocks. We're going to need a bit of this uh, to get ourselves started, so we might as well. It should be six blocks of steel, 54 tar, 54 obsidian for this. Uh, now, let's go ahead. Let's pop out over here, I think. Let's do just a projectile. Uh, 
explosion. I know we have the book, but we can do it ourselves now. Explosion. Uh, I think one dampen is fine. But we'll go ahead and do three. Just to be on the safe side. And then we'll just toss all this down. Now, if everything goes well, we may not have to make any more of this uh, as we move forward, but we'll see. Uh, and that's going to give us 12 superheated steel blocks. And then I think if you went this way, yeah, you would still have to use the multi-servo press. Interesting. And we'll just drop it into there. It seems like it's catching me on fire uh, consistently. Uh, carrying it around, I guess, because it's so hot. Uh, let's see. That is metal press mold two by two. So two Invar, two Constantan plates. Almost wondering if I don't have to jump in water to get rid of that fire. Okay, so there's our packing two by two. We'll go ahead and take that. And then we can just throw that into there. That's going to start packing our superheated steel. Is it two? Yeah, it's four to two. So we're only going to end up with six blocks of the superheated steel. That's interesting. It doubles and then it... it comes back down uh, but then we can throw that into water to get our blocks of compressed iron so uh, but like I said I don't think this is something that we'll need to automate um, because we'll be able to make the compressed iron a lot easier uh, here fairly soon so right, let's go ahead and grab ourselves a little bit of this it's gonna set us on fire but that's fine we'll just go ahead and toss that in and that's going to get us our first bits of compressed iron. And that actually puts us fully into this tab here. A tree oil or refined fuel. I was actually planning on getting into refined fuel a bit earlier. Uh, but the cost of setup really wasn't worth it for power. But I'd love to use it for power maybe. Um, and what do we have for, before we get rolling, for pneumatic craft, uh, we get the pneumatic wrench. That's handy. And I think mainly for the drawer controller, what we need is just printed circuit boards. Which is going to require that we get plastic up and going uh, and get into making PCBs through etching acid. And then it's mostly just pressure chamber stuff, so it's not that bad. A couple steps here to get the drawer controller, but it's stuff we need to get out of the way. And then once we get this out of the way, we do a bit of automation and I, I will honestly feel like where we're at on tech should be sufficient to go back to magic so i don't feel like i'm way behind on tech okay yeah i think we're going to go the route of going the refined fuel uh, just because i was planning on maybe getting into this long term and it's a whole lot better than the tree oil uh, the tree oil is kind of meh you know uh, and this actually since we do have the multi-servos it's not that bad for us i will have to make a little bit more steel for this and i'm going to be making three fractioning uh, steels in this case and i will need 24 iron plates i think give or take maybe a few uh, so i'll go ahead and get those ordered up i'm gonna have to run some more iron that's fine i've got more iron i just wasn't running a ton of it until i got um, bigger storage upgrades basically i'm actually going to go ahead and just request 40 iron because i'm going to go ahead and make another 40 steel for us but yeah for example and i haven't i haven't made the crafting um modules for pretty pipes for this just yet and that's just because i want to get the multi-servos automated it's just a lot of time and i can make steel in bulk and it it's a little bit quicker right now than having to manually craft pretty pipe parts like i was i was actually working towards that automation but then uh you know, it ended up messing up on us. But yeah, you can see it threw a, a blaze cake in there. But it didn't consume enough to actually really run the us system. So, uh, just consumed one to make all that steel. So, But these multi-servos are saving me so much on resources. Like, it's so, so nice, actually. And I am going to need three empty blaze burners. And we're going to have to go fill these uh, in just a moment. Let's go ahead and get our steel scaffolding. We're completing like a bunch of like random tasks. Okay, and then we can go ahead and get some servos. I'm going to have to make some more here in just a moment. But there's our three flare stacks. And actually right here is some oil. I don't actually want it. Uh, but from that, we do get this quest. We get a rare PNCR Pneumatocraft uh, loot box. 
So I'm just kind of curious to see what we got. We got liquid hoppers. That's actually kind of nice. Ooh, are these mimics by chance? Yes. Okay. Let's do big fortune damage. Uh, we got Vampiric Glove and Whoopee Cushion. Awesome. I've been wanting Vampiric Glove. That's my other hand slot right there. Okay, I got some copper and some lead, and I think that should be sufficient for us. Now, while that's running, let's go ahead, let's pop over to the nether, and let's go fill up these blaze burners. wonder if we're going to end up wanting to automate blaze burners, maybe. Uh, because that could be a possibility. I've noticed them in quite a few recipes they've came up. And so that might end up being something long term that we want to set up for automation. I don't know. Okay, now let's go ahead get ourselves nine fluid cell frames. And then we're going to get three. I didn't get enough iron. Whoops. Uh, there's six fluid cells. And we can go ahead and get ourselves two fractioning steels at this point. Uh, and we're going to be using these in conjunction with our centrifugal separator. Uh, let's go ahead, move this over. Let's set it up over here for now, because I can tap into the power real easy. So we'll have the centrifugal separator sitting here. We'll say that you can output out the top, auto outputs enabled, uh, and then fractioning steel above that. Say so you can input from the bottom, auto input. Uh, and it's going to start taking that crude oil, and it's going to be breaking that down little by little. It does take a little bit of power. Uh, that's why originally I was wanting to move straight into refined fuels, actually, as kind of early power. But then I was like, well, for the upgrades that I'd want to have for it, uh, it would be a little bit costly up front. So I decided we're going to wait on that just a little bit. Plus, we'll be able to refine uh, through Pneumatocraft soon and the the diesel and stuff like that from that is actually pretty good. Uh, so that's going to start producing us some light oil and some heavy oil. Now this stuff we can take uh, probably let's set a fractioning up still up here. So you can input yeah it pumped out the heavy oil which is going to start running but I think it takes 100 millibuckets per run I want to say. If not then uh yeah, it's 100 millibuckets. Uh, but we got 75 refined fuel from that. Uh, but at this point, what we need to do is just throw in like a bunch of our bitumen chunks uh, into there. And that's going to break down. It's going to make us up a bunch more heavy oil like we did early on for tar. So uh, now we could also just run bitumen through the pyrolyzer, make cold coke, and get the heavy oil that way too. I mean, that's an option. Uh, but long term, I was really wanting to do like the bitumen method uh, for that. So, um, And that's why originally I had sooty bays in there, but we took them out. We will end up re-adding those. But. All right, so there is our other three fluid cells, and there is our other three, or our other fractioning steel. Uh, and we'll just have this one set up for right now. So that you can output on that side. You can input... Okay, now these, of course, they're not filtered right now, but that's fine. Uh, and then let's just take our basic fluid tank, set that up right there. And we're going to go ahead and say that you can output there. Auto outputs enabled. And you can output on the top side, auto outputs enabled. And that way we can get refined fuel from both sides. So now in addition, you can technically, you can use creosote. Uh, it's not great, but it's sufficient, honestly, uh, for early on. And that might be a better route than either of these. It's not as good as plant oil, but it's not far off either. But like I said, I wanted to get refined fuel up and going anyways. So, uh, But then we have to make the liquid compressor. So we're going to start with one of these. Later on, we'll make more of them once it's a little bit easier. But for right now, I think one should be... Should be sufficient for us, and we need it for the pressure chamber valve. Okay. And I think I needed this for some, uh, it was for the advanced liquid compressor. So we're going to go ahead and make two of the hardened integral components, and I think 
Yeah, this is just singles. <laughs> okay. Well, luckily we have connectors, I think. Yeah, I have the connectors. There we go. There's one part done. Ideally, you would have a lot more automation at this point, for sure. But I was trying to do that, to be fair. I was trying. Can I go ahead and get a bucket of that to finish out that quest? Yeah, and actually right now we're starting to hit the point of having some power troubles. <laughs> uh, so we will be expanding power soon. I think we can we can ease on by because we don't actually need power for Pneumaticraft itself per se. Uh, but we will need to address power properly uh, instead of just getting by on some honey. Even though honey within this pack is very, very potent. Uh, if set up correctly, but we're not, we're not using it correctly. We're just kind of using it right now. Let's go ahead and get two of these and let's get two of these. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get our two fluid cells and our two, I need more cured rubber. I'm kind of thinking, I'm kind of thinking I may set up more arboreal extractors. I mean, we're going to be setting these up for automation soon, which is going to help, but I'm noticing that we're using a literal ton of cured rubber today. Uh, and I mean, I'm running it, but my arboreal extractors just aren't producing it, you know, fast enough. Uh, I know there's other ways that we can go about making it. I do think I may end up setting up, once we can automate the whole creation of arboreal extractors, which will be soon, I promise. I was planning on doing that a lot sooner, but I'm thinking I may just have four trees in here, uh, each with four arboreal extractors, and then I think we would have enough uh, coming in that it would be pretty, pretty realistic. I mean, right now I've got other stuff that I'm working on. Oh, actually, industrious honeycombs make latex. So there is that too, or just smashing down flowers, but I don't know. I like the arboreal extractor method. Because I don't want to go with, like I said, I don't want to go with bees for everything. I want them set up just so we've got them. But I don't want to go with them for everything. I just think it takes a lot of the fun out. So, uh, But let's go ahead. We're going to make ourselves a wire press. Because I'm about to be needing a bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of copper wire. So I do need that. And I'm about to make uh, some more deployers. Because I need to set up our back planes. Because we're about to need those in mass. And uh, I did get these made. These, there's not a whole lot of point, I don't think, in automating these. Because as soon as we make two of these, we'll be able to make the PCBs through plastic sheets. i go ahead and order a couple electron tubes. And you'll notice it kicked on this system. There we go. Those get pulled out perfect. That's what I like to see. And then I can get my two deployers. Okay. I need so many of these things. And then basically I've just got to set up dielectric paste, copper plates. And I'm kind of just, I'm doing this stuff while I'm waiting on some dry rubber. Actually, I'm about to have enough dry rubber. Uh, we'll go ahead and set this up then. Oh, I did actually have enough cured rubber because I got some in there. Totally forgot that. Okay, so I need the redstone flux sails. Uh, there's one. But yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking that this is about the, as far as you'd want to go without like heavy automation, uh, because the stuff's starting to take, you know, a little bit to craft <laughs> at this point. Uh, even though we do have some automation that helps us out, it's still, it's taking a little bit. So this is the blaze mixer. Uh, let me go ahead and disconnect this for just a moment. Let's re-enable this. This will be the first recipe I'm adding to the blaze mixer for right now. Uh, it's going to be the dielectric paste recipe. So, uh, yeah, so I want two sands, three silicon, two tar to make the dielectric paste. That's going to be increasingly more important for us too. So I want to get that automated for sure. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get some circuit back planes being made. And of course, these are just single... Uh, Okay, yeah, they're going in there. I'm going to go ahead and toss that into the multi-servo and get ourselves a bunch of copper wire. And then we're going to need the redstone probe connector. So there's two of those. To pull off two of these, we're going to need six RAM chip 8Es. Oh, these don't stack. Great. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to wait to craft that last one. Then in addition, we are going to need to get a logic circuit, which we're going to need to use the engineer circuit table for that. Uh, so for the engineer's circuit table, that's going to be marine fabric, screwdriver, 
Another redstone flux sail, engineer's crafting table, and some traded wood. Basically just a lot of traded wood. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a bunch of traded wood. There's going to be a stack of it. We'll be automating that soon because I know we need like 10,000 a little bit later uh, for some stuff. So I think for the marine fabric, we can just go ahead and request that. That's really easy. Okay, so there's flux sail. There is the engineer's circuit type. Oh, the connection's back there. Let's put it right there. So that way it's got power. Um, and then let's see. The, for what we need, the logic circuits uh, require circuit backplanes and lead or copper wire. I don't think we actually need the vacuum tubes because we're not doing uh, operators. So... Yeah, I think we can actually do this without. I just wonder if it's going to be. It doesn't show it as being anything in particular. So, uh, white equals set white. Yeah, be fine. Let's go ahead and just make that. Oh, it's just one copper wire. Okay. Uh, and then we'll need to make one more also. But let's go ahead. There is our very first advanced PCB. <laughs> Oh, circuitry. Oh, sweet circuitry. There we go. Let's get another one of these. It's so crazy good with immersive gated. Like, it's just so good. I love this. I love this pack so much. It's actually making me, like, think and work towards things, you know? Uh, there we go. There's two advanced PCBs. And especially since I'm not really... I'm hoping to not have to go with refined storage. So that's going to be another hurdle we get to overcome. But I think this pack, I think it's, it's built in a way that I think it'll work out extremely well uh, to not do that. Uh, okay, and then we just need our two connectors. I'm assuming that we can use whatever color we want. We can. Uh, and we're going to get two hardened integral components. Now, mind you, this is something we're definitely going to have to get automated because this goes into, like, every thermal machine. And I know we're going to use a bunch of these for crafting, and we need these to make the advanced tiers, which we're going to use for crafting. So this is definitely something that we will have to have to automate, but it will be a little bit easier because we'll do PCBs this method uh, instead of this method, uh, which does cut down a bit. But we are going to have to get the flux coils and all that automated uh, fairly fairly quickly. Okay, so now that's the majority of the work out of the way for the liquid compressor. Uh, we are going to have to get some pressure tubes. Let me order some hardened glass, which actually I've got some in here. I think it comes up once more in something else, but there's some pressure tubes. And then let's go ahead. We're going to get, let me double, I think it's going to uh, compressed iron. Yeah. Yeah, see, right now it's trying to order copper plates for the deployers, and it's like, oh, we can't because they're stuck over there. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna escape it soon enough. Uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves four tough fabric. Uh, then let's get a couple bellows. Let's get small fluid tank. Oh, actually, I think I just used the one that had the creosote in it. Oh, well. I meant to use one of these empty ones, but it's not a big deal, really. Creosote's one of those resources where you just have tons of it coming in, usually. There is our machine frame, and there is our liquid compressor. Okay. Now, now that we've got that, we can start creating pressure. Did we complete anything from... No, because they want us to, oh, they want us to get the pressure chamber. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we're going to have to do that anyways, because right now we don't really have any place for the pressure to actually go once we make it. And I usually don't like generating pressure until I have pressure chambers, ideally a few of them, but we'll see. Uh, we'll get to the refinery, but the pressure chamber is a little bit more of a priority because this, I like to prioritize it because it, it gives your... Pneumatocraft system a place to actually store bulk pressure uh, because if you're just trying to run pressure into a refinery There's not a lot of storage there And so your system has to keep kicking on and off and whenever it tries to craft anything it 
runs out of pressure so going with pressure chamber first and we'll be making quite a few of these for basically storing larger amounts of pressure uh, in our system but uh, in order to get this we're going to have to go with the reinforced stone probably the best method for us i mean there is the tc method but we haven't even started tc i'm gonna say magma crucible compressed iron and then just run that through with the light gray. I think that's going to be the best bet. Uh, so I will have to, assuming that I can make a magma crucible at the moment. I mean, I've got a fluid encapsulator that does latex, but I can maybe repurpose it for now. They're really not expensive at this point. Oh yeah, that's magma crucible is dirt cheap at this point. Uh, I will have to, I, I've already got those automated though. I made some uh, between episodes, so that's not a big deal. Okay, so there is our magma crucible. That, and then we'll take, we'll go ahead and take the fluid encapsulator for now. Um, I don't really need this latex, but I think it actually stores it. Uh, we'll just set this over here for now. Alt shift click. We'll just go ahead and clear that little bit of latex out. It's not gonna make any difference. Uh, we'll say output top, or I'm sorry, input from the top and then we'll have the magma crucible up here auto output out the bottom and then we can throw in our compressed iron and get that uh, melting down let's go ahead and do a couple of them uh, let's do like that let's see it's light gray concrete powder okay so let's go ahead make ourselves some light gray dye through the rgb honeycombs the wonderful wonderful rgb honeycombs we're going to be using those a lot more uh, in the not too distant future but let's go ahead and get a couple stacks should be plenty for a bit <clears throat> we can throw that in there and get that running actually i can throw these in there for right now and then we can take them out here in just a little bit <laughs> uh, and then we'll add some new ones in when they're a little bit cheaper but uh, there's other upgrades we can make of course but for now that will be good all right let's go ahead seems like it's gonna take a bit and i'm gonna end up using quite a bit of this stuff we'll go ahead and just smelt that up if i need to make more i will it's not a big deal i don't know 10 might be a little overkill let's go uh let's go five more now the valves the valves are gonna be where it's at and then the oh these are actually really really easy okay uh let me go ahead i'm gonna need to get another batch of servos uh, let's go ahead and get the, we'll go ahead and get the glass out of the way. There's that. And we'll go ahead and get the pressure chamber walls. And then with that, we can go ahead and get the pressure chamber valve. Do I want to take this out right now? Let me, let me leave that in there for just a minute longer. Uh, and then let's go ahead uh, and get a couple pressure chamber interfaces. And then there's a bit more pressure chamber walls. Uh, so now we just have to get the valve at this point. So I am going to go ahead and take this out now. There is our pressure chamber valve. Okay, now we did complete a couple quests here. We get a rare Pneumaticraft loot box that uh, I guess had all this in there. We will take it. And I'll get the Scavengers to light later. That's not a big deal. And then the epic Pneumaticraft box. We got two speed upgrades, which is actually going to be extremely beneficial. Oh, yeah, and we have Pneumaticraft elevators. It's been so long, I feel like, since I've done a Pneumaticraft elevator. Um, and then we also got two advanced PCBs, which is a pretty big deal. That's what we just made. Uh, so getting two of those for free is kind of huge. If only we had gotten them a little bit ago. That would have saved us a ton of work. Uh, but work that I think we really needed to experience firsthand as well. So I'm going to turn these into reinforced bricks just so they stack with everything else. All right, so we're going to set up our Pneumaticraft stuff over here. Our first, like, initial setup. Um, let's see. We could go with a 3x3x3, but I really don't like it because it's just too small. Uh, even though it is convenient for quickly filling up pressure, like initially, I think I think we could swing something a little larger. Let's go ahead and get some more walls. Start off with a decent size one at least. And then I guess we'll do the glass on the front so we can see inside. 
Uh, we'll do the valve, but we'll have the valve in right here, I think. Walls there. Walls there. And then we'll have the interfaces. That. That. And then we'll do that. And there we go. We have balanced crafting system. Okay. Now. Now we get to start uh, actually getting pressure into this. So we're going to set up our liquid compressor here. Keep that security upgrade in there for now. Which actually, there was a quest for security upgrades, right? And we have two for free out of these two machines. Uh, what do we get for that? Oh, a rare loot box. And we got omnidirectional hoppers. How nice. How very, very nice. Uh, so we'll just plug this up like so. Right now it's enable on all ways. Uh, we will add some redstone to that. So there we go. Well, we're going to start building up pressure. This is going to start going up. You can see right now we're at uh, 0 0.04 bars. Now this is still only at a 0 0.01, now 02 bar. Max pressure in this is 5. Max pressure in this is 5. We will be able to make an upgraded version. It just requires that we get the reinforced integral components and basic control circuits, um, which is just assembly. Okay. Actually, the back end, I'm really excited because, I mean, we're going to move off of tech, go back to magic for a little bit here soon. Once we get our storage system sorted and a little bit more automation I want to do. But we're going to be moving on towards this soon, which is amazing i've been looking forward to this for a while uh 500 rotations of this for example <laughs> and uh 500 rotations of this 500 rotations of this i'm really excited for this um, because it's going to take some really cool automation and i mean like plum pudding like <laughs> it's super exciting I love, I love that. Just the whole concept of the engineer school project is just neat. Uh, but anyways, you can see we're steadily building up pressure. Um, it's going to take a bit because this can store up a fair amount. Uh, and with only one basic liquid compressor, it's going to take a little bit. Uh, might go ahead... Which I guess really I could throw in speed. I mean speed only goes so far because you kind of have to watch the pressure on both of these. Because uh, this is, with too much speed, this is going to fill up faster. You can see it's shooting up. But the pressure doesn't have time to move over to the chamber. That's going to be a very expensive recipe. This is definitely going to be the way to go this with this one. But it does require the additional uh, assembly drill. But I don't know if it's... I mean, that doesn't seem too bad, really. Okay, well, let's go ahead. I'll probably end up shutting it off here shortly because I think a bucket is actually going to fill this. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and set up some redstone to this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure this area is chunk loaded. Uh, but you can see the pressure kind of building up in that. But let's go ahead. Let's get ourselves some pressure gauges. One will be fine for right now. And then we can upgrade this to a pressure gauge tube module. Uh, with just a little bit of signal and a pressure tube. Go ahead and get that. Uh, and then as far as where we want to read the redstone from, um, or where we want to read the pressure from, probably reading it nearest the liquid compressor uh, is generally going to be the best bet. So we're going to have it come out here uh, on a compare line. Let's do it. Uh, every half bar is going to be a, is, is a redstone signal so for example at 2.5 it's going to be a redstone of 5 uh, so probably what we're going to do is have this come out I'm thinking honestly shut it off at about an 8 or even a 9 would be good let me see one let's see if we ran it up like this I may not even need the analog lever because this would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 I guess it's still going to be like a 7. Yeah, let's set it up to like a 9. I'll just plug that in. There we go. 
Uh, but for right now, I want to see, I want to make sure before we run it too long, I want to make sure that this actually, if the redstone pen shuts it off, ran like this or not. And let's set the redstone signal or the redstone behavior to low signal. And it's always best to read off the pipes close to your your pressure generators because if you read too far off just bear in mind it does take time for pressure to move down the line because like for example this is a 3.13 this is a 3.07 it's a very minute difference here um, it's more noticeable when you have smaller systems smaller pressure chambers that sort of thing um, and it's also very important and very noticeable when you have really fast pressure generation right now it's not that big of a deal for me but long term it will be you know more important so uh, reading close to your compressors is ideal because you're going to get a better reading a more accurate reading uh, to kind of what your high end is all right now if we wanted to make like the printed circuit board that requires a pressure of four anything that requires over like a four pressure or four and a half something like that uh, you know you don't really want to get you don't really want to hit a five pressure uh, but, but generally anything that requires over like a four or four and a half is going to be intended for the upgraded pressure chambers. Yeah, this is toggling off. Uh, later on, we'll make it so that it doesn't just keep flashing like that because right now, of course, it's flashing like constant. But right now it's trying to kind of stabilize pressure across the board. And then here in a moment, once it stabilizes pressure, it'll stop flashing on and off. You'll see the time is getting a little bit longer in between ticks. And you can see that now it's sitting kind of steady uh, at a power of one. So it's not flashing on and off. It won't uh, once it stabilizes the pressure. Uh, so now it's 3.5 pretty much on everything. Uh, and so this is all stable. It's not going to try to run because the thing about pressure is it doesn't just naturally dissipate. Uh, pressure inside of an enclosed space will stay enclosed. It's not going to drop um, on its own. So if we broke off a pipe, it would start spewing into the world, though. So just be aware uh, to make sure and seal up your pipes before you break them off. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But uh, let's go ahead and bump this now up to a 9. I want to shoot for a 4.5 pressure. Let's take a look at the refinery controller, the superheating elements, a lot of electrum. We're going to need kiln bricks, heat sinks. Oh, these are dirt cheap. Heat pipes. Uh, thermal lagging. That's just rock wool. Okay. And then we're going to have to do kiln bricks, which is fine because I'm going to need them anyways. And then the refinery outputs. Oh, these are really, really cheap. All right. I've been doing just a little bit of automation over there so that we can uh, request things like servos and, and pretty pipe stuff. And I had to run a bunch of lead because I was pretty much out of it. Um, and I was getting ready to... Here pretty soon I'm going to go ahead and set up for automatic rods and gears. Uh, but I did go ahead and I just set a chest up, uh, just running nine out uh, to fix our mechanical press. I think that's the route that I'm gonna take. And I'm gonna move, rearrange a little bit of this. I can push the press over and kind of compact some of this over to the side. We can do plates over here and then kind of open up this room a little bit. Maybe do some other stuff in this room. Uh, and then I added a little bit more automation over here. And, uh, yeah. Because I was, I was running andesite alloy and stuff, so. Um, and I did go ahead and got our seven small fluid tanks crafted up. Uh, and then we've got some electrum wire here. Still kind of in the process of crafting for our refineries. And this, yes, it got through its copper plates too. Great. Yeah, and all that, all that ore is done. I went on a little bit of a mining trip just to get a bunch of lead and copper, basically. And we can go ahead and get our heat sinks. Well, we can get a couple. I need more. Let me see. For the refinery controller, each of these is three heat sinks. And then our MV wire coil. That's not enough. That's enough for one. Oh, I, I keep thinking I'm only making three of these and I'm not. But let me go ahead and throw in that that way it can start making us a stack of steel i gotta set a recipe up I, I, 
I'm still kind of on the fence if that's the route that I want to take. It probably will be, though. I'm really thinking it will be. Uh, because there's just, it's so much output. They're doing it through that method. That it's just, it's so good. And let's go ahead and get ourselves 18 gray rock wool. And then we can get our thermal lagging. We're going to need six of this. And then what does it take just for like basic logistical? Oh. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. So let's go ahead and get a couple of those. Uh, we'll go ahead and convert all of them. There's our basic logistical transporters. We'll just go with these for now. Um, and then let's get a couple chests. And then we're going to be crafting our very first thing on the in our nifty new pressure chamber. Uh, let's go ahead. Set up this. This. We're going to clip off this connection uh, that we're going to say this is going to be pulling this is going to be pulling uh, if we take a look inside of here it's already set to export only crafted items that's what we want uh, and then if we take our two blocks of steel our nine obsidian and our 18 tar that's going to get shuffled off into this uh, honestly i'm already craving speed <laughs> so let's go ahead and toss in little bit of speed into this interface just to speed up its opening and closing and actually a factory hopper might be better here or omnidirectional hopper yeah let's go with that yeah so we'll just put it like that actually we'll leave the chest here that way we can load the chest uh let me get our pneumatic wrench and we'll just do that it's put all 14 into there. Oh, it already crafted. <laughs> uh, and if we take a look, you can see it's opening up. And here comes the compressed iron. Uh, so we got four blocks of compressed iron. Oh, and actually, we're going to need two blocks of this right now for our heat pipes. But they craft six at a time. We only need exactly six. So kind of works out for us. We can go ahead and get our refinery outputs. We're going to need four of these, ideally. <clears throat> and then our thermopneumatic. Let's get those. And then we'll go ahead and get our thermopneumatic processing plant. And then all we need is the refinery controller. Now this, uh, I will need another basic mechanical pipe, but um, we're going to need these right here. And we've got everything except for the kiln bricks. And I'm going to be wanting some of these, like two crafts of them anyway. And I was looking, I actually do need the blast furnace here. Uh, just so I can run this through. Um, and then beyond that, I think mud bricks, mud balls, just dirt and water, construction paste, and just a bunch of blast bricks. And I'm going to be needing three crafts of these, basically. So let's just go ahead and set up our blast furnace at long last. And that's going to be tar... Five lapis dust, two nether quartz dust, and ectoplasm for each one. And then we'll just take and throw in that, 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 that into the mixer. This will be the superheated one. Uh, or the heated mixer. That's going to give us our coarse lapis compound. And then we can just throw this into the blast furnace. And uh, I'm assuming that we're going to need maybe coal coke for this. Let's see, is this one cold coke per? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be about one cold coke per. It's interesting. I mean, I know later on we can do this through the arc furnace. But arc furnace is going to be a little ways away for us. So, might be worth... Uh, hoo -hoo. Yeah, we're going to have to automate that. Because upgrade matrix matrixes... I mean, I don't need them right this second. But, yeah, down the road for sure. So, uh, okay. And then, all we really need at this point is just to get the mud bricks set up and the blast bricks all right let's go ahead and add a recipe here for blast bricks or blast brick blend uh, so that's how you make that uh, and then that way our system can do this for now on but i'm going to go ahead and throw this into there and that way it can start sending it over to the water mixer because uh, i want a batch of this for our blast bricks and i did go ahead and i made the mud bricks and set up a deployer for those so that's ready to go uh, you can see we got 63 i accidentally threw one of them 
if you right click them, um, I was trying to set the, the filter to the deployer and uh, I chucked it. All right, now these kiln bricks, I think they're used for some other stuff. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just set up a recipe for them and say that if you send, uh, this is kind of for long term. I mean, right now we don't have the smoldering lab piece automated, but some of this stuff will kind of fall into place once, I mean, right now I can't even order half this stuff because it just gets stuck. Uh, but we're going to say that if you send smoldering lab piece compound, you're going to get kiln bricks. And let me grab our smoldering lab piece compound. Let me tell this system that it can insert smoldering lapis compound and then of course we'll have to pull it off here in a minute uh, but let me go ahead and throw that in i'm just gonna run well might as well just go ahead and run all of them and then i'll just add it to the filter after the fact which those will keep, take a couple rotations just because they do require all the blast bricks but i don't think we're going to be crafting them that much i actually don't think it'll matter either because they still i mean they still run through pretty quick and now it's going to get the mud brick which unfortunately is right after the construction pace. I may end up switching those and having the construction because it almost always falls at the end. All right, and these are going to get their last blast bricks and they just have to go around once more for the construction paste. Well, that one just already has, looks like. Come back, come back, come back. All right, let me go ahead and add in that to the filter. There we go. You can see how easy it is to add things to our sequence assembly monstrosity that's over here, so... A little bit of rearranging as new recipes come in, but that's not a problem. Uh, we're going to set this up right over here for now. These will actually get moved, though the Coke oven's probably going to stay here. I am running right now just because I didn't have a lot of cold Coke and I needed a bunch for that, basically. But uh, most of the time, it's not going to see any use. There we go. There is our kiln. Now... We should be able to get three superheating elements, and then we can get some more basic mechanical pipes, and then we can get our refinery controller. There we go. And actually, yeah, that's what I was setting up for, and then we got to get that and a little bit of plastic work stuff. Uh, let's see, what did we get from, we're going to be turn. I promise we're going to be turning all these quests in after we get our drawer controller, like next episode, I promise. Uh, the only reason I haven't is because it's going to be so much stuff and I don't want to have to deal with it right now. <laughs> I've got too much stuff uh, that's piling up and making a mess for me. What did I get? Oh, pressure tubes. Wow, we got 20. I think I had two or something, so that was a pretty good jump. And long term, of course, we're going to set up more thermoneumatic processing plants and stuff. But right now, one is fine. <laughs> one is okay for the time being. Uh, now, let's go ahead. Uh, we're going to run out and set up our refinery real quick. So we can go ahead and start producing this. Uh, it'll be next episode before we get our drawer controller. But uh, we can go ahead and at least start, start producing uh, our refinery stuff. Let's actually go right back here and just set up our refinery uh, because if you take a look at the refinery controller you're going to see four tabs here and if you only have say two uh, you're only going to get like the first two things uh, when you process say water of course water doesn't really matter but uh, when it comes to processing oil there's four different things that we can get and we want to get all of these uh, ideally so we're going to go ahead and do that uh, and then let's go ahead uh, i think probably the quickest method for this right now is just fly out in the world and grab some oil uh, we will be setting up some oil automation but right now just all my automation doesn't have a place to go so i'm just going to grab up a tank of this oil out here which is honestly going to be sufficient for us uh, because i just want to get enough plastic uh, so we can get our drawer controllers so that we can automate things and then at that point, kind of the uphill climb is done, I think. I thought it was done before, but then uh, my stuff stopped working. Uh, okay, so we'll get to refine heat a bit better later on. But for right now, we're just going to run. That's the thermal pneumatic. We want to take that, put our refinery controller there, and set up our thermal pneumatic here. And then, is that how I want to set? Uh, no, actually. Uh, let's remove this. A lot of this stuff is going to get kind of moved and adjusted but for right now for right now let's put our thermal pneumatic here i'm gonna go ahead and peel back this wall just a little bit 
Uh, and then we can plug up our pressure tube to the back of that and run it from your new line to your old line uh, because you don't want to leave a line open like this because if this had pressure it would start spewing into the world uh, so we're going to run it across like that and oh yeah that's still got tons of refined fuel uh, so this is going to get a bit of pressure in it uh, and it'll probably start running this a little bit as well uh, to kind of balance things back out actually i meant to set it back by one uh, a way to do that oops we lost a little bit of pressure, but not much. <laughs> because I actually want the thermonumatic here. It'll just make it a little bit more convenient for us for now. And then we can plug that in. And then let's go ahead and take this, and we're going to fill this full of crude oil. Uh, we can store 16,000 millibuckets in there. That's fine. Uh, and then what we're going to do for our heat, is we're going to take our lava bucket. And just put down some lava. And you can see the temperature shooting up in this. Now eventually it will turn this lava into, I think it's obsidian. But uh, for now this will be fine. You can see the temperature on the thermopneumatic is jumping up. Uh, and you can see that we have diesel, kerosene, gasoline, LPG uh, coming out at this point. And for our plastic, in order to get our molten plastic, we need to run LPG... Uh, or biodiesel, uh, but we're going to be running LPG for now uh, with some coal, and 100 LPG actually gets us 1,000 molten plastic. So what we're going to do is we're just going to find the tank here that has, of course it would be the one on the top, we're going to find the one that has the LPG, and then we're just going to run this down. Yeah, you can see it's already... That's okay, we'll get a little bit of free obsidian. I don't need it. I've got obsidian bays, but... We're going to get a little bit of free obsidian. Uh, so we can go ahead and start pumping out that LPG into this. All right, we've got 324 LPG in there at the moment. And so we can take our coal and we can throw it in. And uh, let's go ahead and break this off. Yeah, the heat dropped too low. That's fine. Lava doesn't last long, but it'll be fine for now. There's a whole lot better methods later on. But for now, this is cheap, free, and... and it'll be fine uh, but you can see we're making molten plastic there and then we can just of course set up a tank here all just temporary but uh, let's go ahead and pump that out and there we go our plastics being sent out uh, and I mean beyond that I mean it's a really easy resource to generate uh, for the LPG 4,000 millibuckets uh, and then to make our plastic sheets all we have to do is just put it in the world so we can just grab our molten plastic and basically just dump it in the world it's a whole lot faster than i remembered it being extremely fast uh, but then that way we can get our plastic sheets we're gonna need a few of these uh come next episode so i was looking through i'm used to just having you know certain things that we can use for heat but there's a lot added in this pack like there's a lot of cool options uh and blaze burner works <laughs> so you can see i mean this thing is kicking through uh some some oil at the moment and it's gonna make uh doing our lpg so much better uh because you know the hotter this gets which right now it's 348 degrees the hotter this gets uh the faster it's going to run and also, I was thinking we might, instead of doing our plastic sheets just in world like that, we might go ahead, uh, because the heat frame is dirt cheap, it's so cheap, uh, and all we have to do is cool it real good, and we have a chance for that extra output on the plastic sheets. Um, it might be a little bit rudimentary at first, um, but we'll set up something you know that, that gives us a little bit better output. I'm not sure if this... Okay, yeah, it's really just the blaze cake that's going to get it hot enough. That's okay. I have I can I have plenty of blaze cakes, and they, they craft automatically. So Because it does a lot more plastic than lava does. So, uh, But if you're ever curious about the, the heat and stuff, you can just hit U here and go to your block heat properties and click here. You can see there's a lot of different options here. 
And yeah, come next episode, we might set up something for cooling. I don't know. This is this is able to pump out a lot of plastic. But and then when I was doing the lava, I was like, man, it's gonna take forever. But then I looked and I was, I was like, there's got to be a better fuel source. And it was like blaze burner. Just when you're looking at it, just bear in mind that there's gonna be thermal resistance. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. Certain things, like for example, torches are really high up on here, but the thermal resistance is so high, uh, you're not going to be able to really do anything with it. You know, its temperature is really high, but it's just not it. It's not useful whatsoever. But with that, I know it's wrapping up point for this episode. So next episode, we're gonna kind of come back in pretty quickly into the next recording uh, because I've been pushing really, really hard. I want that drawer controller. So like my automation, it does great. But generally, I'm playing like Easter egg hunt to go find where all my stuff is like bogged down out and my system has trouble requesting anything and it's just it's but we've been laying groundwork as we go so once we get that sorted out and then we automate a few things we'll be able to order all of these things so and i've been steadily adding in some little automation and some recipes here and there and i'm, I'm basically at the point now where i can set up automation for formulaic assembly caters uh and pretty pipe modules so I'll be able to expand my system a lot easier, but I need that midway chest freed up and not, I need priorities to actually matter again. Uh, and I think the drawer controller is going to be uh, a, a great step in the right direction. So it won't be such an uphill climb after that, I think. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.